Pat Magley with Heroes Camp Podcast. Still going to be talking about fasting and prayer. Let me say to you what the Lord showed me earlier this morning. Don't brace yourself. Embrace Christ. If you break yourself, you're going, you're going, you, if you brace yourself, it's going to break you. It's going to break you emotionally. It's going to break you mentally. It's going to break you. If you brace yourself, it's going to break you economically because you're going to quit giving. Give yourself to the work of the ministry. Give your heart and embrace the Lord Jesus Christ. And these are the greatest days for God to receive glory out of our lives. And uh, Antichrist is in the church. And many that go to church are being led by an Antichrist spirit. They don't want to pray. That's Antichrist. They want to talk about all kinds of things uh, uh, absent from the word of God. They want to talk about homosexuality absent from the word of God. They want to talk about racism absent from the word of God. They want to talk about justice absent from the word of God. Justice is got its own economic system, which is called oppression. And so I just thought I would give that to you right off the top. Um, I want to talk about a lot of things today, uh, like I usually do. But um, it's a way different kind of a day. Let me say this, that E.M. Bound said, a life without prayer cannot be computed by arithmetic. A life without prayer cannot be computed by arithmetic. So that's why I keep on talking about fasting and prayer and standing your ground. This is the time, and I spoke at Heroes Camp this morning uh, in our prayer meeting uh, about um, occupying until he comes. Let's advance the kingdom of God and let's deal with the second heaven, uh, which is the headquarters of evil, the headquarters of Satan. And many people don't know that. And the third heaven is releasing um, strategies, blessings. A lot of times, like in Daniel's book, uh, they got interrupt, interrupted and it got brought through through fasting and prayer. And Daniel, the Lord heard from you the first day you prayed. But the prince of Persia, Persia resisted me uh, 21 days until the answer came. And sometimes it'd be 21 years if you hold on, don't, don't fold. So today, what I, one thing I want to talk about amongst other things is what it is to bear. Let me tell you something. Quit listening to everybody. I don't listen to people that don't pray. I got my ear out and I can hear something that come through the news that God will want me to hear. But for the most part, I'm not talking to nobody about my life, my marriage, my children and heroes camp about people that don't have a prayer life. I'm not submitting the kingdom of God to the kingdom of America just because they said it on TV. Don't make it right with me and sure don't make it true. I've been alive long enough. No, it don't work like that. I want to talk about today about what it says in John 16, verse 12. Jesus, there is so much more I want to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. The word bear means to hold on or remain firm under a load. You want to know a little bit more about the future and you freaking out now? You freaking out by a mere coronavirus? And you think you want to hear about the future and get some more revelation? God's looking for some people that have been through some stuff in this interracial marriage 45 years. I knew what I was getting into when I signed up for it. I knew there would be racists. I didn't know it would be in the church. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know that it would be those closest to you, be your, your enemy. Uh, those are in your own household, be your own enemy. Been through a series of things in 10 years that were almost more intense than the rest of my life put together. I can bear something now. I can hear something now. What God give me to show me ain't going to freak me out. What God give me to tell me ain't going to freak me out. We got too many people running around talking about stuff, but it's so low, low level. We need to know what God is saying about our future. We need to know what the Lord has already scripted and, and, and prescribed for us as far as victory. Uh, so the word bear means to hold on or remain firm under a load, to bring forth to give birth to, to hold up under. Man, we need to hold up. Don't bail now. Don't be practicing all this other stuff that they say you need to practice about social distancing. Go to prayer. 
to press or push against, to suffer, to undergo, to endure, uh, to sustain without yielding. Don't give up no ground in your life. Don't give up. Just keep your, increase your giving. Increase your prayer. Increase, 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 increase. Increase your capacity. Apostle Willie Ghost in the Child of the King ministry. I think my favorite CD they ever put out was increase your capacity. Increase, 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 increase. Get an attitude about it. To be fit or to be worthy of. To transmit or to spread. That's what it is to bear. To carry in mind and heart. To exhibit or to short forth uh, the young or, or the fruitful. To strive harder and intensifies one's efforts to transfer and to transport. Now, let's look over in Mark chapter 9, and we're talking about bearing. And in Mark 9, and in verse 29, There was an epilep, and the disciples were unable to cast out that spirit. Afterwards, when Jesus, verse 28, afterwards, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? And Jesus replied, this kind can be cast out only by prayer and by fasting. Only, not epilepsy, only unbelief. Unbelief only comes out by prayer and fasting. How does that work? Well, I would say that part of it is that you get closer to Christ, and the more you have your proximity brought closer, the more you intensify what you see in his ability, what you see in the anointing that he gave you, what you're able to feel and experience internally that you can come against something externally because the force of your faith has increased. The word capacity also says the ability to receive or contain talking about increasing our capacity. I don't want to just have victory. I want to go from victory to victory to victory to victory. I want to go from strength to strength, from faith to faith, and from victory to victory. That's where it's supposed to, the world will take notice of us and we won't need to minister them. We won't need to evangelize them. Everybody else is heading for the hills. They're running scared. They're tucking tail because they've not been with the Lord. Now listen to me. I don't care nothing about my life. I care about how I live my life. I don't care that I'm alive a day or tomorrow or the next day. I want to be, but if I'm alive and don't do his will, am I really alive? I've sat down and evaluated what I'm talking about. It's not how long I live. It's how long I live up to the will of God. Capacity means the ability to receive or contain. So when you fast and pray and you throw that unbelief down, nothing shall be impossible to us is what the scripture says. The ability to receive or contain power of receiving impressions. Oh, I'm talking about revelation, knowledge, etc. A mental ability, ability to perform or withstand. Uh, it's uh, increasing in size. Capacity has to do with bulk, burden, magnitude, range of ability. How far is that? Is that two weeks, two years, two, 20 years? God will give us some things that we'll be able to bear up when he gives it to us. I hope I'm hitting the mark with this for you. I'm hitting it with for me. Retention, dimensions, quantity, and scope. Can we Are we able to bear what God wants to give us in the way of strength and not go over and just have to write a new book about it and make a video about it and make a YouTube video about it? But can we put it to use? Can we exercise the power of God upon the body of the enemy in this hour of uh, 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 injustice, lying, cheating, conning? I remember when lying, cheating, conning were just uh, for people that were unscrupulous. 
But when those people are now in the pulpit and those people are now in the White House, and I'm not talking about anybody in particular, but how did they creep in? But they crept in because that's what the Bible said would happen in the last days in the book of Jude. They, they would creep in and they would have, they would change the doctrines and they would change the script and, and they'd be mockers and scoffers of men. These things are not right. Capacity, listen to me, gives the ability to bear revelation. Many more things Jesus wanted to reveal to his disciples, but they weren't ready. If the body of Christ is freaking out over coronavirus, can he reveal anything to you? Unbelief cuts down Jesus communicating certain things to us because we are not ready. Listen, fasting and prayer increases our capacity of revelation Vision, understanding makes unbelief harder to work against us because we begin to believe because we are close enough. We went higher and we went longer, not just forward. We go higher when we come down from prayer, then we can go forward. Fasting and prayer are God's ways to depth. We're in new seasons in life, especially uh, to another level of fasting and prayer. So we can reinforce hearing the Lord's voice. When I quit my job in 1990, and I started Heroes Camp in 1989, running Heroes Camp and my job. But I quit my job in May of, two, uh, of 1990 at GW Burkheim at 612 Chapin Street. First thing I did, I had no money coming in. I quit my job by faith because God said, okay, now it's time. I fast three days a week, four days a week for three years to generate the income, to generate the protection. Kids were coming from all over the place. 30 years later, we're building an empire, not an economic empire, but an empire for souls to be born again into the kingdom of God and a empire of development of maturity and the maturation process. Even want to develop the culture of fasting and prayer, in particular for children that are still in elementary school, that they could get this deep in their spirit. I'm the right person to hear the right thing. Um, we had one of the premier intercessors in the whole world, Bishop Tudor Bismarck's wife, Chi Chi Bismarck came and had two 12 hour meetings through New Wings of Faith at Heroes Camp. And she said, one of the first things she said, if it come down to teaching a child of the Bible or teach them to pray, teach them to pray. Because many read the Bible today and still don't pray. And I had to scratch my head and think about that and evaluate that. And now that word has been spoke maybe, oh, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. She's absolutely right. Pray, pray, pray. The Bible says men ought always to pray and not faint. It does say, don't let the law of the Lord depart from your eye day and night. Meditate therein and cause your way to be prosperous in Joshua 1 8. But prayer and my little grandson, my granddaughter, I got three grandchildren, two of them bend the early morning prayer. Three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock. Come in there and get in a taste of it. And when they come to the gym, they're not coming to play. They know they're not. They're sober. They're sober because their parents told them where they were going and they were down with it. I'm talking about four years old and six years old. Come on, what's that going to look like when they're 10 years old, when they're 12 years old? I'm excited about this thing, but we got to teach our children to pray. Fasting and prayer deal with the flesh, which makes room to bear information called revelation. You didn't hear me. When we get sin out of our life, we got more room to bear the revelation of Jesus Christ and how he's going to deal with this future. We're not going back. We're not going back to where we came from. We're headed towards the end and a new beginning. And the Lord told me every day, tell every, told me this morning, tell everybody. Begin to read Revelation 21 and 22 and encourage yourself. Just because it's the end, that don't mean you dying. You ain't never going to die. You're never, you're going to live somewhere forever. You're going to change realms and dimensions, but, and you're going to come out of this earth suit. 
Now I'm going to get another earth suit, you know. I'm going to get a heaven suit. I'm going to get an eternity suit. Oh, God, let me say, are you listening to me? Write this down. I've got evidence that demands a verdict. I'm talking like this with great confidence. I've got evidence that demands a verdict that I should be able to say in the 30 years that, that I've been living full time by faith and God has met my needs. I've never had my lights cut off. I've never had to call and have my a gas bill adjusted. I've never had to call and say I was late on my car note that God has kept me. He has kept me. And since I've been born again, paying my tithes for 38 years, I'm telling the Lord will keep you. But you got to want to be kept by obeying. And I don't mean being perfect because I'm not. Childlike faith is a womb of miracles. Just as it was in the case of Mary. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be unto me according to your word. She agreed with God. She was a virgin. She didn't know how it was going to take place, but she said, let it be. Coronavirus, I overcome you. Racism, I overcome you. Poverty, I overcome you. Let it be according to me or what you've said, God. That's how she birthed Jesus. This whole thing about faith is supernatural. This whole thing about Christianity is supernatural. And when people have submitted the kingdom of God to the kingdom of America, and now we're more interested in our children going to college than they are going to prayer, we're foolish. And we've not been very smart with the little short thing that we give a gift. It is called time. It takes time to learn these things. And the angel of the Lord departed from her. Yes. This is the month my daughter told me in prayer the other day when she came to prayer. It's the month that refines the refine. It's the month of the refiner fire going. It's going to get continual hotter so we can become pure. Adjust your temperature to the heat of God. Turn our passion into compassion. Turn our passion, she said, into compassion. A lot of us are passionate, but we don't have compassion for the lost. And that's why we don't evangelize. And that's not good. Listen to what I'm saying. We got too much sometimes Bible teaching and stuff. But John the Baptist comes from the wilderness. And he's the first one that knows who Jesus is. And he says, and it's Jesus' first cousin. And he knew that. And he knew his auntie Mary. And, 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 and Jesus knew his auntie, Elizabeth, because they were sisters. But he said to the people, behold, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world. He didn't learn that by reading the Bible. And he didn't learn that by being at the fish fry or when they caught the 5,000, when he multiplied the 5,000 fish or the fish fry or at the round table. He learned that Jesus was God in the wilderness. And I'm saying that, that God is getting ready to have a massive holocaust on Christian flesh that has been walking in immorality and without prayer. And he's taking us all to the wilderness where we can learn who Jesus is. It's a healthy place. And he's going to kick out all the props. He's going to kick out your car, your blessings. He's going to kick out everything that you think that you've earned that, it was, that have taken away you spending time with Jesus. He wants to bless you with so much more. And he wants you to be able to bear something, but you're so busy with your blessings that you ain't got time for him no more. Your heart don't beat for him no more. Your tears don't cry for him no more. You cry because you wrecked your car, but you didn't cry because you wrecked the wreck of your marriage and a wreck of your children by driving around in a nice car. There's nothing wrong with nice things, but there's something wrong with the pattern when, when nice, nice things begin to supersede Prayer and fasting were out of order, including going to church without prayer and fasting. I thank God I go to a praying church. I thank God I'm under a praying man. I've always been under a praying man. Dr. Lester Summerall, Apostle Willie Coach Jr., and now Apostle Jeff Wilson, praying men of God. I couldn't be under someone that wouldn't pray. It's so important that we don't take a break from pushing the envelope. You keep hearing me reference this, you know, push the envelope, 
and uh, 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 break the barriers, break the things that are blocking us from uh, getting the things that are not just for us, but they're for us for others. Money that's for us and money that's for us for others. It is a Joseph generation. Many will be able to distribute because of God's wealth coming into their into their sanctified hands, into their hands that can be trusted because they can bear. Can you have a billion dollars and still give a widow's might? Can you give the whole billion that future generations can have? I think he's testing me on that. People that get rich, they usually do not last long. When they get rich quick, they usually don't last long. God's ways are thorough. When I was a child, I thought like a child. But when I became a man, I put away those childish aspirations just to pimp the ride of my life. No, 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 no. Let's make everybody, let's, 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 let's put it out there, Acts 2 and Acts chapter 4. The degree of revelation, the brightness and the depth of it are in direct correlation to your otherworldliness of your heart. Let me say that again. The degree of revelation, and in parentheses I wrote, the brightness and the depth of it are in direct correlation to otherworldliness of your heart. Do you mind contemplate the things of the Spirit? Do we mind the Spirit? Do I not just obey it, but do I mind it? Do I contemplate? Do I daydream about it? Do I dream about it? Have I thought about it? Have I taken time to go sit down by the river and just contemplate it and just let my mind become fascinated by revelation? If you're fasting in prayer, that's where you're going to want to go. And I'm telling you, without going there, you're going to freak out because the future is getting ready to be rough. But it's doable. It's doable because the Bible said the judgment of God will not come near my dwelling place. The wilderness talking about what John discovered. And John was so big on the inside, he wasn't welcome in the city limits. He, he, Jesus said, I have much more to, to say to you, but to reveal to you, but you can't bear it. You, you, you're too small. Lord, don't let, I don't want to be, I pray every day. Don't let me be small, God. Give me wisdom. Give me insight. Give me revelation. Show me what it's going to take to be what I'm supposed to be to bring you glory, God. The wilderness is brutal to the carnal Christian because even in the koinonia, a fellowship. It's not usually around Christ. So you can go to church anymore and people will talk about sports or they'll talk about politics, but they won't have no pure coin in here talking about what the Holy Ghost is saying or what the Holy Ghost done did or what the Holy Ghost wants to do. We got coin in here. That ain't no coin in here at all. Coin in here is around Christ. The wilderness kicks out all the props. And I like that. I, I, I like it. I like it. As an athlete, I like being forged in the fire. I remember when I was 15 years old, I put 18 inches on my vertical jump. That's all I did. Some guys showed me how to train from the University of Notre Dame, College Jones, Austin Carr, and, and, the, and the late great Sid Catlett, whose daddy used to play drums for Louis Armstrong. I've had people in my life that just let me see something. They didn't teach me. They just let me see them doing it, and it was enough. Why? Because I was hungry. I wanted to be a hooper. I put 18 inches on my vertical in one summer, running with a 30-pound best weight, doing just hundreds of rim touches every day, and then just jumping rope and just working on my footwork. And my legs would kill me every night. But I was trying to get somewhere. I was hungry. I was hungry. And then when I came to the playground, I didn't have to run my mouth. I ran my game. We got a lot of people running their mouth right now in the pulpit, but they ain't, and it's just running the game because they ain't been in a place of prayer. They aren't sure about right now. They don't know what to do. They're preaching from the Bible, but they're not preaching from heaven. To forge, to be forged is by heating and hammering. Oh, I've been through some stuff now. And, and, and I didn't like it when I was going through it. But when I came through it and I looked to the other side, I saw the hand of God in it. Even before I got saved and I had to reevaluate a lot of different things. We had a tornado. Huh? And then and then after the tornado, uh, the insurance company didn't do right. I never made one claim. Then my middle brother died. Then one of the ministry friends that we had led to the Lord, his wife died. 
My wife's mother was sick, lost her leg. It was some dark times in my life, but I was being forced. I didn't understand what was happening, but I refused to quit. I got up every day and I put my hard hat on and I went to work. I woke up every day. I put on the breastplate of righteousness and I went to work and God was doing something in me in that day for this day. Forge means by heating and hammering, beating into shape to form or to make especially uh, by a concentrated effort, a special fireplace, a hearth or a furnace in which metal is heated before shaping. Education did not shape you. Reading the Bible does not shape you. Going through something with God and being forged in the fire. Go through that first. And then as you read the word, you'll be pliable enough for it to shape you. And it will shape you into the will of God. And when your future comes, you'll be so significant in everything that takes place that's got to do with the government. Because the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God. And of his Christ, things are shifting over into Christ and Christianity. Not this old thing that's passing away. Churchianity. I'm talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Bible said in that he said that in, in a metal, which is heated before shaping, the workplace of a blacksmith. As a Christian, if you haven't been forged in fasting and prayer, you're practicing forgery. You're a knockoff. You're not going to stand this. You're not going to stand. We're not as a nation. We're not going to stand. Everybody that's crying, Lord, Lord, ain't going. One or two will be in the bed. One will be taken. Two will be in the field. One will be taken. Those that are going to go through with Christ, they're not going to love their life even to the death. Mockery. There was some, the Bible said that the world was not worthy of. Some were boiled in vats of oil. Others were hanged from a low tree. For the bear to, uh, and when the he, when the hanging didn't kill him, a bear came and ate him. That's what this thing was built on. Death. The death of self. The death of the flesh. So we made room for the spirit to come and operate in this world. We are the beginning of this great holocaust of circumcision. Don't hear me say death of humans. Death of self. And because I'm saying it, I'm in it myself. Um, the Bible said in Isaiah 54, and, 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 and let me read that. Give me a little bit more. I got a little bit more ways to go. But in Isaiah 54, and in verse number 15, if any nation comes to fight you, it is not because I sent them. Whoever attacks you will go down in defeat. That's a prophecy. We need to hold on to those things right now as things come against us and they want to integrate schools with all different types of transgender stuff that's wrong and they want to increase up on children and, and make them go different directions other than what the word of God and what God has said. I'm not talking about I hate them people. I'm talking about God is the friend of sinners. Jesus is the friend of sinners is what the Bible said. And of which I'm a chiefest, of which I'm a chief, former drug addict, alcoholic, strung out pornography. I ain't put my business out there that he ain't put out there. He put it out there when he came to get me. That's why he came to get me. I was lost. But now I was lost. Now I'm found. And so I was blind and now I see. And I want to continue to see. I don't want to go back to sleep. That's why I'm talking fervently like this. He said in verse 16, I've created a blacksmith who fans the coals beneath the forge. And makes the weapons of destruction. He said, I've created armies that destroy. But in that coming day, no weapon formed against you will succeed. He said, you will silence every voice raised up against you. So he create, he created this heat. He created the one to create the heat. But no weapons going to be formed against us because we're in the forge. Now we know how to deal with the forge. When it gets hot and you don't know how to deal with it, you're going to need a teacher. Jesus is that person. 
He'll teach us in the forge. Listen to what the Lord showed me this morning in prayer. He was bleeding before he went to the cross. He, he prayed so earnestly that his pores opened up and blood came out. Before anybody pulled his beard, before anybody shot dice for his clothes, before anybody struck him with a, a, a cat of nine tails, before anybody pushed his sword into his side, before they put anything in his hands or in his feet, he was sweating blood. Oh, I think I owe. I'm speaking like this as a debtor. I'm not speaking like this as accusation against you. I'm speaking like this fervently, hopefully encouraging myself, encouraging myself that I could go and finish this race and finish it strong. Said the Bible said, him that endure to the end will be saved. That's Isaiah chapter 54, 15 through 17. Let's take a look over at Psalm number uh, 12. And verse six. Thank you for being patient with me. I am what I am. By the grace of God. Verse six. And it says, the Lord's promises are pure like silver refined in a furnace, purified seven times hotter. Therefore, Lord, we know you will protect the oppressed, preserving them forever from this lying generation. Well, I tell you, the American Medical Association and the political association and the uh, 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 religious associations have duped mankind. And there are people that in that will be offended with what I said. I'm not talking to the righteous ones that are in that, that they are the salt of the earth. We got greater politicians than we've ever had in some cases. Those are individuals. They're not parties. They're individuals. And I swear to God, they're hated by their party. Their party. There's ministers that are great ministers and their ministries don't seem like they want to grow. Why? They're speaking the truth in love. And so the Lord's promises are pure, like seven, like silver refined in a furnace, purified seven times over. Therefore, we know you will protect the oppressed preserving them forever from this lying generation, even though the wicked strut about and evil is praised throughout the land. Even though they look like they're getting over, the end game ain't going to be good for them. Let me turn over to Revelation chapter 3. Give me a little bit more time, please. Uh-huh. Well, in Revelation 3.18, He said, mm. we'll start in verse 17. You say, I am rich. I have everything I want. I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched. And this is the church of Laodicea. This is the church of backslidden. This is the church of compromise. Very much like the American church today. And it wants to be a trumpet for the world. Please, thank God we're not. But we're going to be. We're going to be, when we come through this other side of this testing, the God that want the people that really want God are going to go through this testing. I'm, I, I want God for me and my household. We want God. My children want God. Heroes Camp wants God. Mm -hmm. Realize that you are wretched and miserable, poor, blind, and naked. So I advise you. So how can the church let all this racism take place all these years? All this oppression and this economic disparity where people that, you know, they just bless themselves, bless themselves, bless. They don't never pull nobody up another level. They don't never think about nobody else. Self-centered, self-centered, self-centered. It's layer the scene, layer the scene, layer the scene. So I advise you, he said, I advise you come buy gold from me. Gold that has been purified by the fire. Then you will be rich. Also buy white garments. That's got to do with purity from me. So you will not be ashamed of your nakedness and anointment for your eyes. So you'll be able to see our correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. Look, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and share a meal with him. That meal is revelation. The meat of revelation. The meat of revelation. 
And Jesus is telling his disciples, follow me. Come on, man, follow me. He doesn't say where he's going. He doesn't say what their destination is. And he doesn't say what they're going to do. But he does say that his yoke is easy and that his burden is light. And then he just says, the just shall live by faith. And these are the clues to the mysteries. These are the clues to the mysteries. Follow him. That's a clue to the mystery. You don't need to know no more than that. You're not ready to bear that. You're not ready to bear that. Some of the things that went wrong in my life that he prescribed that be able to develop me faster through the thing went wrong. I didn't do nothing wrong, but it went wrong. The tornado went wrong. It destroyed our gym. It took a while out, but he showed me nothing can separate you from the love of God. If you haven't been forged, you're practicing forgery. The furnace of yours or any other affliction in Bible times increased fasting and prayer immediately. When you're going through a forging and you're going through a testing or you're going through a, uh, a, a an affliction, fasting and prayer will help you maintain your position, not lose your elevation, not lose any ground, and increase, increase, increase. Because remember what I said, fasting and prayer is a time of increased capacity. I mean, uh, forging is a time of fasting and prayer and increase of capacity. In the making of money at the U.S. Treasury, one plate makes all the $100 bills. And Jesus is that standard. If a $100 bill didn't come off that plate, it's a forgery. It's a forgery. God is getting ready to quicken the pace of forging the saints because there's a new leadership that's appearing right now. He's got us under wraps and they're going to come and they're not going to love. Them. They're not going to hedge their bet. They're going to speak the truth and love. They don't care who takes their money back. They don't care who don't come to their church no more. They don't care. They love not their life even unto the death. Listen to me. Truth, truth unquickened by God's spirit deadens as much or more than air. Truth unquickened by God's spirit deadens as much or more than air. That's what Ian Bound said. Crucified preaching only can give life. Crucified preaching can only come from a crucified man. Crucified preaching gives a crucified life and can only come from a crucified man. We must begin to fall away from the sins of the flesh, overeating, oversexing, overthinking and just let God be God and let him take us on the ride of our life until he connects us with eternity. It's not important how we die. It's not important. It's important that we do what he wants us to do to receive the honor from our lives. My wife said this morning in prayer that prayer is the language of the poor. Not just economically poor, but poor in spirit. Suffering because of someone else's suffering. It's called intercession. To fast and pray, it gets in there deeper in your spirit, in your soul, in your being. And it rolls around. It rolls around. And <coughs> it establishes a beachhead for prayer. The fasting and prayer are a stronghold for spiritual acumen and spiritual revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many people are spiritual, but they're not born again. I'm not listening to nothing that they got to say. They're new agers and they're psychic. I want to hear what thus saith the Lord is by the Holy Ghost. And he will confirm it by his word. I'm praying for us today. And in particular, our elderly. And in particular, the ones coming out of the penitentiary. 
that already did their time. They didn't pay their dues and they get out and they go into oppression. What's wrong with that picture? Seems like if you committed a crime and you paid your dues, you should come out into freedom. But they do not come out into freedom. And there's something the church concerning the rate of recidivism or the percentage of people going back to the penitentiary. It seems like the church ought to have a vested interest if they're trying to bring glory to God and have something set up for them and help them get established on the rock. And the Bible says set, he'll set our feet on a rock and establish our goings. Those that have missed the mark one time, two times, three times sometimes, they need to still get a chance. And we should facilitate that chance. And I'm not talking about promoting evil, neither. I'm talking about when a man is overtaken in a fault and he humbles himself. That's what I'm talking about right there. And then the children. And then even the unborn. And those like that all over the world. Lord, I just pray. Use me, God. Show me what it's going to take me to get into the position where I see you using me. Show me what's blocking me from getting there, God, if anything is. And when it's my time, let me go in with the full force of faith that your name is honored. Father, please help me to be where I ought to be when I ought to be there and be all up in there doing what I ought to be doing. And help me do it again tomorrow and call the breakthrough, Lord. God, I love America. God, I love Russia. God, I love that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I love Hungary. I love, I love South Africa. I love South America. I love all the countries of the world because God is our creator. And Father, bring out of this, this one new man that you spoke about in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. And I'll thank you for it, Lord. If I pray anything according to your will, it'll be done for me. In Jesus' name, have a great day. Peace.